What's up everybody? Saul Sunforge here. Today we're going to talk about portals to other planes of existence in Dungeons and Dragons. Portals are an exciting prospect because they could possibly lead to lots of future adventures in plane travel. Some of the most popular planes in D&D are the Feywild, the Shadowfell, Mechanis. Some of the lesser used planes can be a lot of fun too, like Mount Celestia, the Abyss, but no matter where your portal leads to, you want to make sure the location that the party is entering from is very dynamic. Sure, you can have portals just willy-nilly everywhere you'd like them to be in your campaign. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. But if you'd like to add a little bit of spice to it, whenever I make portals, I like to put them in fantastical locations. Uh, yet locations the party may already, you know, kind of assume they would be. Uh, like, for instance, a Feywild um, portal would be in the in the forest somewhere or um, what I like to do is maybe have them in like a garden maybe they find a, a random cottage or something um, in the forest or in the you know kind of like in the middle of the uh, the beaten path or whatever and um, you know they maybe they'll go inside that cabin or or you know maybe in the garden they open the they might open like the fence the picket fence or something for the garden and uh you know they'll maybe they'll see uh you know what's on the other side they won't know that it's a portal but once they open that gate that that's the trigger point for the portal and then the garden uh you know when they transfer from the garden they'll end up in a similar garden or maybe even the same garden um for instance in the feywild now when you're making a portal to avernus or to the abyss or to carceri uh which is the prison the prison plane where uh, the most most ruthless criminals of the multiverse uh, get sent, and that's that could be a great adventure there. But what I like to do is have guardians, you know, from that location, um, you know, guarding those portals. Uh, so you may have a devil guarding a portal to Avernus, and the way the portal is created is completely up to you. You could be completely creative with it. You could create an NPC who goes around and makes some of these portals, or past adventurers. Who, who's discovered uh, these portals and activated them. Or you can have a quest for the party to activate the portal, and that's part of their journey is finding out how to activate the portal in the first place to get to the pl different plane that they want to go to. But if you have, like, say, a devil or a demon guarding their respective portals, then you can have a, an, an interesting dynamic NPC as well, and you can even tail off of that further and create a line of NPCs waiting to access the portal. You can change, you can have the portal open at certain times a day on the full moon. You can have like a Stonehenge type situation, uh, you know, where, you know, you might maybe need to call on a Druid to activate it, uh, you know, or a series of Druids and they might send you on a quest in order to, uh, you know, do what they want. They'll do what you want and then you're, you're good to go. But each of these NPCs, um, you know, offers possible uh, things for DMs to to do um, in terms of offering quests or talking to people who may be reoccurring NPCs later on that you can call back onto when the player does get through the portal and gets to where they're trying to go. Um, you know, that's a great, that's a, just an instant hook right there. And you can even have factions guarding several different portals if you want to. And, you know, if you're trying to get through to a portal and a faction that maybe is neutral or hostile even, uh, or even at war possibly because you belong to a separate faction, well, then it could cause a whole bunch of complications for a DM. That's gold. Some portals, you can even have two, two or three factions, you know, uh, fighting over control of that portal. And maybe the, par the party has to pick a side. And then you introduce the party to, to several factions at a time. And then you can introduce reoccurring NPCs from those factions. What I like to do is put the portals in places that um, surrounding the, the, you know, the immediate area, depending on how big the portal is or how long it's open, uh, the influence from the world that is on the other side of that portal that you're trying to get to is influencing and corrupting uh, the land or, you know, not corrupting necessarily if it's a good aligned plane, you know, 
such as Mount Celestia, but you can have like a Solar guarding that portal. I already talked about the Devils guarding Avernus and a Demon guarding the Abyss, although that might be a little bit harder to explain. You can still do it for sure. I've done it, but you, you know, it's a little bit harder because demons tend to be more chaotic and they don't really follow. They don't really follow rules um, if they're left to their own devices. Uh, they're more of a uh, corrupting influence. And so you would have to have a very strong reason that they would stay in the vicinity of that portal or guard it. If you don't care to do all that work, that's fine. But you can have a, room, a portal room or a series of different portal rooms in separate areas. Just like they do in World of Warcraft, like they have in Shatrath or the Outlands. You know, or Stormwind or Ironforge, you know, different portals to different places. But you can have a representative for each each uh, portal from the plane that that portal leads to, um, you know, in that room. And then there'll be like a pact of neutrality or something like that. And so that would create an even more interesting situation where devils and demons are in the same room together, but they're not fighting. They're not. They're, they're not. They're not trying to advance their side's agenda in the blood war. So you could plan a lot of adventure hooks around portals. Think about the locations you would want portals to be. Think about where they lead to and where it sort of makes sense that they would be. You can even have portals in dungeons as a surprise. And, you know, the party goes through the dungeon and then eventually they get to an area of the dungeon. There's no enemies. And, they're, you know, kind of suspicious about that. It's because it was cleared out um, by the guardians of the portal or people who are on their way to the portal. And just, you know, the front of the dungeon is full of people. Or maybe there's a, there's multiple entrances into that dungeon. And, um, you know, three of them are unsafe, but one of them is incredibly safe. And uh, the party can either not know about the portal and stumble upon it. Or they can find out about the portal through lore, through, you know, reading in the library or tomes or that they find. Or maybe even a note or a parchment on, on a... Um, on a monster uh, humanoid that they've uh, slain. So just think about these things and I assure you that uh, it'll make your campaign that much better. So hopefully this video, you know, this quick video gave you a little bit of inspiration. Uh, if you have any ideas uh, that I haven't covered, leave them down in the comments section because I'm very interested in, in all of you guys, all my players and you know, I want to hear what your ideas are. We could bounce ideas back and forth in the comments section. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and hit that follow button. I appreciate you all. Thank you for your time and have a great day.